what God has planned for you. For the seeds in your hand, decide the harvest God will plan for you. And remember today, and don't give up your dream. Don't let go of the vision that you know God has given to you for every single, every single promise God has ever made, friend, you're going to find so true. And though the fire and the waters come, they will not. They will not hinder you. Remember today. And don't give up your dream. Don't give up your dream. Don't turn loose of your vision. It's not over yet, my friend. What God is planning for you For every seed in your hand Decides the harvest God will plan For you and me Remember today Just don't give up your dream I don't care what it is, get it bigger What God is planning for you. Listen, every seed, every seed that you have placed in God's hand, it's not overlooked. You haven't given God anything, your time, your effort, your finances, that he hasn't seen. So remember today. And don't give up your dream. Just don't give up your dreams. Come on, say it right where you're sitting. I won't give up. I won't give up my dream. Come on, say it out loud. I won't give up my dream. Oh, I won't give up my dream. Don't give up your dream. Don't give up your dream. God's looking for people who will incubate the seeds of the miracles he's planted within you. At some point in your life, God's going to give you an invisible photograph of your future. God's going to give you an invisible picture on the inside of your life, inside of your mind. Maybe your marriage healed. Maybe your body healed. Maybe that cancer removed out of your body healed by the power of God. It may be that you need a financial miracle in your career. God knows what's on your mind. And he's looking for somebody who will grow the seeds, the dream seeds that he's placed within them. Abraham had a picture of the genealogy of his children. He had a picture of Isaac. And he fertilized and nurtured that photograph. I call it a dream seed in the inside of him. In Mark chapter 5, the woman who had hemorrhaged for a dozen years said, if I could touch the hem of his garment, I know I'll be healed. Joseph saw himself sitting on a throne, and though he went through a pit, and though he went through a prison, he had a photograph of the palace. One of the things I love about PTL, one of the things I heard Tammy sing in a song the other day that just brought this so alive and real to my heart, if you'll keep a picture on the inside of you big, of what God is bringing you to, God will bring you through where you are. If you'll build the picture big of what God's bringing you to, it'll energize you to go through whatever circumstances you're presently facing. You know, there's an exciting song called Jesus is Alive and Well. I wish 
I would have, uh, what's this, introduce PTL singer Ron Ulrich to explain why they're dressed the way they are. Thank you. All right. <laughs> How was I to know that? I was looking over there, and I noticed they're dressed a little different today. And they say it's because they've been on vacation. They just got off the plane 10 minutes ago, <laughs> and they're here. Is that the song? Is, is that the right song? Yes. And uh, we have missed them. I was here back a few days ago, and we have missed them something fierce. And uh, they've got a song, and there's only one thing I hate about this song, and that's that Mike Murdoch didn't get to write it. I sure God gave me that sometime ago, <laughs> and I, didn't, I just didn't write it down. But uh, I, noticed, I noticed you guys are really, boy, you, you did just get off the plane, didn't you? I, had, I, I saw a couple of you, Ron, but that's... Some of us got home just last night, but uh, we've been on two weeks of vacation time, and we all went to various places. I guess you can't guess where I went, huh? <laughs> and uh, some of the girls went to Jamaica, and Brian went to California. Uh, Lee didn't go anywhere, so he just wore something from home. Uh, <laughs> but we had a marvelous two weeks off. And uh, we thank Eastern Airlines for giving us uh, the trips where we were able to go. And we thank uh, PTL for their generosity to us and letting, letting us have the time off. So now Brian Keith is going to sing, Jesus is Alive and Well. Jesus to that old cross The devil danced around with glee You know he thought he had the children of God And he would take them and pitch them in a fiery sea <laughs> But on that third day the stone was rolled away The angel said, Mary, go and tell That the Son of God, he is risen Hallelujah! Jesus is alive Are you tired of sitting around the house with nothing to do? Well, I've got the perfect solution. Why not come and see us here at Heritage USA? Because over the next few months, we've got some exciting activities planned that we're sure you'll enjoy. Let's take a look. Two favorites continue to headline dinner theater at the Grand Hall. 
Tuesday evenings, it's the Heritage Show featuring Doug Oldham, Derek Floyd, Bob and Jeannie Johnson, the Celebration Singers, and the PTL Singers and Orchestra. Come and enjoy this evening of gospel and patriotic music. Then on Friday evening, Broadway comes to Heritage USA as Sing America Sing featuring the PTL Singers and Orchestra takes you on a journey back in time, reliving some of your favorite show tunes that are a part of America's musical heritage and some of your favorite gospel tunes as well. And that's not all. You've seen them on television. Bob and Jeannie Johnson are PTL lovebirds. But now come and see them as you've never seen them before in the latest addition to Dinner Theater. Bob and Jeannie always. This dramatic presentation looks back at their lives together, including the music that makes this couple one of your PTL favorites. Bob and Jeannie always runs each Wednesday evening at 7.30 in the Grand Hall. Also in the Grand Hall or the Barn Auditorium, each Saturday beginning at 10 a.m., join Bob Johnson and the gang for a time of great fellowship and fun at the continuing Fort Hope Charity Auction. There's always some great deals on items of all types, and it's for a great cause, the completion of our Center for Street People, Fort Hope. So come on down to the auction. Even if you're not bidding, you'll still have a great time. And there's more. April 2nd through the 6th are the dates for our National Spring Break Getaway. These five explosive days planned especially for young people will feature some of the best speakers, video and record parties, sporting events, and power source. A contemporary Christian concert marathon with Russ Taft, Silverwind, Isaac Air Freight, Tammy Sue Baker, and more. For more information on this event, contact Mark Muirhead at 1-704-542-6000, extension 2321. The Woman's Place in the Word is the theme of PTL's upcoming workshop for another special group of people, women. Conducted by Viaz Vito, June Nichols, Doris Boydston, and Pam Rice, this four-day intensive workshop will look at the special problems that women face and give the participants the tools to combat and defeat these problems. So enroll now. This workshop begins February 25th. Also coming up soon is the second annual PTL Prison Ministry Conference, March the 5th through the 8th. Prison workers will once again gather to share ideas and testimonies of how God is using them to reach souls in our nation's prisons. If you're interested in attending, contact Jeff Park at 1-704-542-6000, extension 2086. And for our Canadian friends, March the 9th through the 16th are Canadian Days at Heritage USA. There'll be special events and speakers planned just for our Canadian friends during this special week. So plan on joining us, eh? And here's some good news for viewers of the Inspirational Network. Camp Meeting USA has returned to the air Monday through Friday at 8 p.m. live from Heritage USA. Tune in for some great music from the best gospel artists and some of the finest preaching in America, five nights a week on Camp Meeting USA. This week, Rex and Maude Amy Humbard will be ministering, followed by Amy Cortese, March the 3rd through the 7th, as Camp Meeting USA starts its new 90-minute format. Then on Sunday from 10.30 to 12.30, beginning March the 2nd, Join Pastor Jim Baker and the PTL Musical Family for the live broadcast of the Heritage Village Church Service. It'll be a time of worship and praise we're sure you'll enjoy beginning in just a few weeks. So you can see we've got some great events scheduled just for you over the next few months here at Heritage USA. If you need information on any of these events or activities, just give us a call at 1-704-542-6000, extension 2100 or 2227. With this week's upcoming events calendar, I'm Frank Gamble. One of, the questions, one of the questions that people often ask me when I travel everywhere, they said, is PTL really that enjoyable? Is it really that beautiful? And I have to say it, it's that the television cameras cannot capture what's here. The electricity, the energy of people. And I have often said that Jim and Tammy Baker are the master host of the world. I've been around the world many times, and I have never seen people more capable of giving and sharing with people. And it's passed on down through the staff, it's passed down through the partners. And something is happening in March, and Pastor Dorch, you and I just were talking about that, that you have got to circle your calendar and come to PTL during the month of March in just the next few weeks. And tell you why this is important. First, if you're a good steward, Jim is offering a free night at the Heritage Grand or each night that you stay. Am I correct? If you stay one night, you get the second night. Explain that a little bit to me. Well, Mike, you know, we're so grateful to God that we have so many tremendous things going on. Where when, you see, when you see that dynamite presentation of all the things that are happening here, you yes. know, I live here, but it makes me want to get involved yes. too, doesn't it? But we're simply saying to people who really are thinking about a lifetime partnership, 
And, you know, that, I think that includes everybody, people who really want to see what God's doing here. And you have to see this place. You have to experience it. You can't talk about it. You can't just show television. You have to experience it. So we're saying to those dear friends and partners that come, and when you come, and you have to pay, naturally, uh, to stay in this beautiful, fabulous partner center, we'll match a night for every night you pay for during the month of March. In other words, if they came and if they stayed three nights during right. the month of March and paid for three nights, yeah. Jim would give another three nights right. for each night they stayed. They can stay six nights and pay for three during the whole month of March. And uh, we think mm -hmm. when they do that, they'll probably then want two lifetime partnerships for the towers. <laughs> I thought there was a blessing involved. <laughs> <laughs> but, but there's no obligation. Yes. Some people who could come and do that and say, well, you know, we, we, we're not going to do it, and that's, that's no problem. You know, I get it all the time. People say, I've never dreamed there was this much happening at PTO, and there's no way to describe it. There, I said the other day, I said, for me to think of my life <laughs> without PTO would be like going from color to black and white world, and there's right. no way I want to do that. Can I mention, and, Mike, yes. that it's so important that our partners remember that when this program comes on live, and when it's on the satellite network, immediately thousands of people begin to call this number to make hotel reservations for prayer or for whatever it may be. And I hope they'll be kind enough to, first of all, recognize that we can't take care of everybody's call at the same moment. It's just, it's just impossible. Yeah. So spread them out. Call an hour later. Call three hours later. And we want to take care of them. We have 23 people. Now, capture this. We have 23 people who do nothing but take hotel reservations. And you add to that the scores of other people. We have over a hundred telephone operators, but they can't hit all at the same time. So if you can't get through for your reservation, if you can't get through to call for prayer, we know and we care. And believe me, we're <laughs> updating our new switcher, and we're going to take care of these problems. But you can imagine all that coming in at the same moment. So I hope our friends understand. And yes. forgive us if we've created an inconvenience. Yes. You know, one of the things that I had asked the Lord for, when Jim had asked me to be the guest host this week, I said, Lord, make this a miracle week. Amen. Make this a miracle week for our partners. Let something happen today, the next several days, that's never happened before in all of our lives. And I know I've asked God to do that for Jim and Tammy, to pour into them creative ideas, strength, insight, and while they're working on this book, <coughs> it'll be everything that God wants it to be. And I had just got through reading Jim's new book, Prove Me prove me. And he has some material in there on giving that perhaps may not be in any other book that you've ever read. And uh, you've got to get a copy of this book. There's two people who are with us today that probably know as much about giving yes. and have written books. And, you know, I, I saw a little biographical sketch and I thought, who gives a rip about, about you say Rex and Maud Amy Humbard and the world knows. And I want you to welcome them again because I want to hear from them today. We're so glad. Rex, we're glad to be here. We're glad to be here. Amen. Amen. I love you. I tell you, uh, you're talking uh, about giving, Mike. First of all, we receive Jesus Christ as our personal Lord and Savior. When we do that, we're no longer our own. Everything that we are, everything that we own, belongs to Him because He purchased us at a place called Calvary. Yes. Then we are adopted into the family of God, and the very nature of God is to give to others. But one of the things people have to learn, and I had to learn, was that when God plants that nugget of faith down in our heart, like Jacob wrestled with the angel, God had sent the answer, but there was a battle going on, a spiritual battle. And one of the things I had to learn was that every time I knelt down and said, Lord, give me, it didn't happen that quick. I must have faith in God that God can minister to me and speak to me and give me that nugget of faith. Faith starts with God. That's he good. has made all the promises. We merely accept them. Now when we have that kind of a faith that we believe God, we hold on. For instance, in pioneering television. I went to the station and said, I want the church service on television. They said, we don't want God. I went the second time to the same TV station. We don't want God. 
I knew what I wanted. I knew what God had promised me. But see, we live in a world and an enemy is trying to defeat us. And we have to have faith that holds us. And part of the giving is the giving of our faith in God's promises. Yes. Sometimes when we talk about giving, people start thinking about dollars and cents. That's true. God said, if you will give your tithe, your offerings, bring them into the storehouse, I will open the windows of heaven. We don't have to open them. And I will do the pouring out of the blessing yes. that you have need yes. of. I will multiply the fruits of your field. And I'll make other nations and other people call you blessed because God made a promise. But first of all, we must be really sold out to the Lord to anchor our faith, not in circumstances, not in what the five senses tell us, what we can see or feel or hear or what we'll really understand. But we have to anchor our faith in the promise of God. Yes. That means go back, go back, go back, go back. Yes. And you know, on the 13th trip to that TV station, I got the program on television. 13th. I had the promise, but I went back 13 times. 13. You know, someone, someone says that uh, a winner is a person who can try one more time. Not 10,000 times, not 20,000 times, but a person who can try one more time. And you went back 13 times before they actually accepted. 13 trip, and I might say just this. We had fasted, we had prayed, we, we knew that God had promised us that he was going to open that door, we was going on television, go to every state in the union, evangelize the world by electronics. That was the faith, but this is many years ago. There were no nationwide TV programs by preachers. It was impossible. But the 13th trip, God sent a man to the front door that I'd known for many years. I'd done radio at WWVA in Wheeling, West Virginia, twice a day with him. He was the manager's manager, and he went in and introduced me to a man I'd already met 12 times and said, this boy's got a good program, put him on TV, and walked out. The manager's manager told him to do it. He turned around and said, where'd you meet him? I said, never you mind, you do what he said. And that was the beginning <laughs> of our nationwide program. <laughs> oh, praise the Lord. You know, Bob, I was talking with Bob and Jeannie Johnson a few days ago, and there was a remarkable letter that came to you from some young girl that uh, involved in giving. And uh, wasn't it something about... We, we had, uh, previously we had come in contact and, and later on met a young girl that uh, Jeannie and I called on her 15th birthday just because she's a PTL fan and uh, she picked Jeannie and I out to sort of come in contact with and, and she just likes us, I guess. And uh, so right before our big auction, she sent me a letter and she said, Bob, I don't have a fur coat or I don't have, you know, anything to give, but I do have $5. So she sent us the $5. Well, during the auction, we auctioned off her letter. My auctioneer caught the jest of her $5, what it, the importance of it. So he auctioned off her letter and it brought $2,500 to the auction. <laughs> Hey, and Bob, then, could I give you a five here before this is over <laughs> today? Because you know, I think that's pretty good. That's a pretty good return. Yeah. Uh, so later on, I got another letter from her. And she said on the day of the auction, she went to a, a ceremony that night at her school. She had entered some kind of contest. And she came out second. And one of the prizes was $75. And she says, I got my $5 back 15-fold. Praise God. Fort Hope and PTO got my $5 back 500-fold. Praise the Lord. Not only that, not only that, but she made all straight A's that, pay, that, that period of time that, you know, that semester, I guess, or wherever, the, it's been so long since I was in school, I don't even semester know how often they give out. Semester. They, might, they give out report cards. <laughs> we used to get report cards every month. <laughs> but she got straight A's, and she said, I know it was God helping me because yeah. normally she doesn't make straight A's. But, and she says, everybody at school is interested now in PTL just because this young 15-year-old teenager decided to give us $5 to help Fort Hope. And it, yeah, yeah. it blessed her life and is blessing her and her friends. You know, there's a song. I don't know if you can sing it, 
but uh, if you can prepare, there's a song I started living that, that when I started giving to God that you and Jeannie sing from your one of your albums. Mm -hmm. And are you in position to sing that song? We can. can. You, could you sing it? We I'd can. I'd like for you to sing that if you. Wife's here. And uh, I saw her back there. She's back I there. I did. Maud Amy. Yes. You are Miss Universe Energy. <laughs> I, I'm nominating you as Miss Energy of the of the gospel. Would you tell and, my body that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what's what's the what's the biggest thing that you've learned about giving? I know that you. Oh, Mike. Um, I think giving of myself is my most enjoyment. I don't have a lot of other things to give, but giving of my time, giving my love to people, it's just, especially when you come to Heritage here, but down through the years, giving of yourself, maybe just a handshake, maybe a pat on the back, just a smile to somebody, I think that's a, the, the only thing that you can really give of yourself. Yes. I know we got out of the plane yesterday and we went to get in the car. Well, here was the bus, Heritage USA bus. They're picking up people to bring them to uh, the program this week. And I got on the bus. I didn't have to, but something inside of me said, go, because that's where my, that's where my love is with people. Yes. And I got on the bus. I shook their hands, and I found out what towns they were from. And I got such a blessing out of that. And I thought, well, you know, that little mother or that grandmother that's traveled from San Diego, they'd come from Philadelphia, everywhere. They will never forget that time that I just gave just maybe one minute, but it made me feel so good. I got in the yes. car and I thought, my week's already started, Jim. Yes. Oh, praise God. You know, we want to, I want to dedicate this song. I wrote this song at a crisis time of my life, as many songs I've written, but God began to show me something about giving more than just giving, and that is that giving brings receiving, receiving or reaping. Some people have said, is it all right to sow to receive? Friend, that's the purpose of sowing. The purpose of sowing. Jesus gave his life to reap a family back to himself. We sow to set in motion a reaping cycle because if you don't believe in receiving, you're not going to be in giving position tomorrow. What does that mean? Well, let me give you an example. If I give with no thought of a harvest. It removes my faith. It takes away my ability to bring in a harvest. I must give with faith for a harvest, for the harvest to come toward me. And my receiving makes tomorrow's giving possible. If I don't receive anything today from God, I have nothing to give back to God. Mm -hmm. So my giving capability tomorrow, my giving capability tomorrow, depends on my ability to receive today's blessing, today's miracle. Now, I want to dedicate this song to two groups of people. First, those who have been sowing a seed of $1,000 for the Towers membership where you get the three nights and four days here every year for the rest of your life. And then the second group I want to dedicate this song is the Silver Club who have sowed a, a seed of $1,000 for all the activities and everything here at PTL for the rest of your life. And you know all about that, or maybe we'll hear about it shortly. But I want to dedicate this to those who've stretched your faith to give $1,000. You've moved out of the 10, out of the 20, out of the 100, and you reached on the deep well, way down in the, in the very bottom, the well of your faith. And you said, God, I'm going to sow $1,000 in the PTO ministry because I believe in what they're doing and I believe this is a great opportunity for me. And I want to dedicate this song to you and Bob and Jeannie Johnson are going to sing it. I started living when I started giving to God. Here they are. Amen. Shake it down. 
would not receive what I believe they fail to realize. The cheese that made a new plan of seed, I'm gonna make it grow. Second Corinthians 9, 4, 6, you're gonna reap from every seed you sow. Now I started with it when I started giving it to God. told Jim Baker on several occasions, I said, Jim, the biggest thing and the best thing that you've ever done for me has helped me unlock my faith in God. By the way, I want to mention something. Every person who writes this week, every person who writes, and I hope you'll reach for your pen right where you're sitting there on your sofa, your recliner, wherever you are, reach for it and write a note today and say, Jim and Tammy, we're standing with you. I'm thrilled that we were able to push them off to do their book and get it completed. And it's not going to be a week of rest too much, but a week of great productivity for them. But they need to hear from you. And we want to hear from you this week. When you write, if you'll mention, is this called the, the Lord of the Harvest? The Lord is what of the it's Harvest. Is there a particular yes. name for this picture? But every person who writes will receive this beautiful uh, picture for framing. And uh, you'll be, just, just for the writing. Also, when you write, those who sow a seed of $10 this week in PTL, if you'll request the PTL devotional guide, and I told someone the other day of all the devotionals, there's nothing more boring than most devotionals. Have you ever noticed that? I have read of many of devotionals, and most of them are not worth a dime, believe me. I sat there and said, why do they even write this? But this is not this way. This is, in my opinion, it's the best devotional that I have ever read outside of one I wrote many years ago. <laughs> but it is absolutely su super new. Mm -hmm. For any $10 gift, request the month that you're writing. I want to say a word from my heart to yours about the seeds that you're sowing. There will be opposition. Even now, the newspapers on the West Coast are still <coughs> cycling these articles to try to attack. I, I don't know of a man, I guess, who's been opposed anymore and assaulted anymore than Jim and Tammy. And every time that they've tried to give their partners, every, have you noticed that, right. Pastor Dorch, every time that they go to do something significant for the partners, Satan arises and shows himself. Perhaps you've even read some of those articles and you've said, I wonder if this is, I, I need an explanation of all this. Well, we'll get into that a little later, but the point is that you cannot sow and Satan not oppose you. That's right. But that also gives you an indication of how big the harvest is that God is planning for you. I want to ask you about your faith. When are you going to use your faith? You say, well, Mike, for me to sow a seed of $1,000 and become a Towers partner or for the Silver Club, that would take a lot of faith right now. It would be difficult for me. Well, I don't doubt that. The first time I ever gave $1,000 in my life to anybody, anywhere, anytime was Jim Baker right here at PTO. Mm -hmm. And my top at that moment, just a few weeks before, I had given $500 to a ministry. And I thought that was a crisis because my biggest up to that point had been 100. I was a $100 man. And Jim was talking about $1,000 faith. Giving at the top of your faith, not the bottom but stretching your faith from a 5 by 7 to the 16 by 20. And something inside my heart leaped. And I said, God, this is for me. This is for me. 
I knew there was something on the inside of me that wanted to give God $1,000. There was something on the inside of me that wanted to be a part. And then there was that logical part inside me that said that you can't do it now. You got to wait. One of these days you can. One of these days you'll be able to. You can't right now. But I'll never forget ever when I reached on the inside of me and I said, God, I will obey you. Now I want to ask you two or three questions right where you're sitting in your home today. If God gave you $1,000 faith, would you use it? If God gave you $1,000 faith, would you use it? Or would you sit on it and wait? Would you postpone it? The second question, when will you use it? When will you use it? A year from now? Six months from now? Or will you do what God impresses you to do? One day while I was watching Jim here on PTL, I suddenly had a great desire. There were three friends of mine that I felt impressed to give a lifetime membership to of $1,000. And I sat there and I thought it and I said, but God, and God brought to my mind Proverbs 3:27, withhold not good from them to whom it's due when it's in the power of your hand to do it. Mm -hmm. It may be one of your children. It may be somebody you love. But God has given you a desire to sow that $1,000 seed. I want you to get up from where you're sitting, go to the telephone, dial the number that's on the screen, and say, I want to sow a seed of $1,000. And there's two particular groups that we're talking about today, the towers, and that gives you for $1,000. Jim's the only preacher in America that gives you an instant harvest beside what God gives you. Three days and four, three nights and four days in the towers every year for the rest of your life. And there's nothing like it in the world. Don't put it off because as you begin to say, I want to be a part, you'll watch a series of blessings begin to happen for you. And the second is the silver club, which are people who give $1,000. Not only reap the blessings of God, but instantly for the rest of your life, all of the activities. And Pastor Dorch, you know more about those. I mean, there are so many things I couldn't even begin yeah. to name them all. Well, Mike, people will be able to come, think of it, every year, and they get two commitments to the marriage workshop. That's, that's a $300 value right there at the present price. Then they're going to be able to go bowling. They're going to be able to go horseback riding. They're going to be able to go roller skating, the biking, the Christian cinema, tennis, bowling. And, and our new health club here is going to be fantastic. All of these greats, miniature golf, swimming, all of these things, all of the non-food events, for their commitment of $1,000. When they give that $1,000, they don't have to get, you know, $2 out of their pocket to do anything here. It's all taken care of already. And besides that, when they're here, they can enjoy people like Rex and Maud Amy, Humbard, yes. and yes. all the great things that are happening. And think of it, the water park, the water park's gonna be ready right away. And it really is a gift that goes so far beyond the $1,000. And when they bring their friends, when you're a Silver Club member, their friends even get a 25% discount to all the things. So try it, you'll like it. Yes, <laughs> amen. At some point in your life, God's going to give you an opportunity to use your faith. There'll be a day, there'll be a night, there'll be an hour, there'll be a moment when God will knock at your door and say, if you want to use your faith, I'm here with a miracle, with a blessing. A minister asked me the other day, he said, Mike, why do you preach sowing and reaping? I said, well, I hear so many people talk about giving, but almost nobody feels good about receiving. They feel guilty. They feel bad about receiving back. And, and uh, one of my precious friends that I love very much, Brother Will Roberts, made a statement to me one day that I had to think about a long time. He said, Mike, our people don't know how to receive. Our people don't know how to receive. Many of us are into giving, but we don't know how to receive back the harvest. We don't know how to receive back a reaping. And one of the things I'm thrilled about, by the way, the book that I mentioned earlier proved me. They said the name has just been changed to How to Receive Showers of Blessing. So when Jim comes back and talks about how to receive showers of blessing, get the book, whatever you do, because it's powerful. Jim's biggest weapon in his life has been love, and his favorite ammunition has been giving. And he's learned 
a secret. If people ask me, what do you think the secret of PTL is? I think the secret of Jim Baker's life has been giving. Giving back to God what God has given to him. I want to have a word of prayer, and I feel very strongly today about this. I want to pray for your receiving. I want to pray about your harvest. I want to pray about you that's already been giving. You've been giving faithfully and consistently. And every month, we count on your monthly support here. And God has honored you and God's blessed you, but you may be in a miracle zone. You may be in a place where you need to receive more than you've ever received in your life. Maybe you need insight about a problem you're facing in your business. Your husband may have left you for someone else and you're sitting there trying to raise two or three kids and you don't know how in the world you're going to do it without support. I don't know the biggest miracle in your mind, but God knows. You may be laying on a hospital bed right now. And I want you to receive the harvest that God said you could have. And you say, Mike, what kind of harvest would I receive? Whatever you need. That's the harvest you receive. What did Elijah tell the widow? He said, the thing that you're needing the most, that's what God wants to do the most. And I want to have a word of prayer with you. And I want you right where you're sitting, right where you're, if you're laying on your bed. I want you to get ready for a miracle. As you've planted seeds in this ministry, and maybe you've, even today, maybe you just sat down and maybe you wrote out the $1,000 and you sent it in to PTL and you're saying, I did it because I knew God wanted me to do it. I did it because I felt it was obedient to do it. I did it because I, I wanted to use my faith, but now I need a harvest. You may be sitting there thinking, if God would just provide the $1,000, I would do it. Well, then he knows that in your heart too. Whether you're sowing $10 or 1000 what you place in God's hands isn't lost. It's in the process of being multiplied, but God wants you to get your expectation up. Start talking your faith. Let's have a word of prayer for just a moment. Father, I feel so strongly in my spirit today that there's a miracle on the other end of our seed. And there are those, Lord, that's even watching the television this very second who have sowed into PTL, who have supported Jim and Tammy faithfully. In the name of Jesus, partner, I call in your harvest. I call in the harvest that God said was yours. And even the disease that's in your body, the cancer that may be there, the arthritis, I command it to go in the name of Jesus upon the authority of the Word of God. As we release our faith together right there in your home, release your faith and say, God, I choose to believe. Just say it right where you are. Father, I choose to believe. I release my faith today because I need a miracle in my body. I need a miracle in my home. I need a miracle in my finances because nobody wants your blessing any more than God wants you to be blessed. I want you to say it right where you're sitting. I receive my miracle today. I receive it in my body. Command the sickness to go. We command it now in Jesus' name. I command the pain to leave your eyes, your ears, your heart, your stomach. Your back is being healed. This very moment, your back is receiving the healing of Jesus. Now release your faith for your marriage, for your home, and say, Lord, I believe you want my marriage healed. You want my children restored. And Lord, I call in the financial harvest that you said was mine. I want to tell you something. When you get ready to use your faith, God will use his power. When you use your faith, God will do something that was not going to happen for your life. I want you to go to the telephone right now. Call, you can put it on Visa, Master Charge, whatever, and say, God's talking to me about my $1,000 faith. Now I want to use it while the Spirit of God is moving in my heart. Do it now. We're looking for your letter this week, and when you write, don't forget to ask for your devotional, a special $10 gift, and pray for Jim and Tammy. We love them. We miss them. We'll be back with you tomorrow. Get your letter in the mail today. Until then, keep looking for a big harvest. Amen. Amen. The Jim Baker Program, stay at the beautiful Heritage Grand Partner Center. To make your reservations, call 1-704-544-8100. Eastern Airlines is offering discounts up to 50% off for anyone traveling to Heritage USA. Call and make your reservations today, 1-800-468-7022. In Florida, dial 1-800-282-0244. If you'd like an audio cassette of today's program, send a gift of $5 and ask for tape number 3409J. Bring the war.